today's video, we're going to see if we can make the world's largest slice of that greatest meat, bacon. Bacon is pretty great. I think everyone agrees on that. I think maybe the internet's obsession with it has died down a little bit, but it's still wonderful. Uh, my biggest complaint about it is that it's small. This piece of bacon, eh, I mean it's good, but it could be a lot gooder. Here's the basic idea. We're going to see if we can take a slice of pork belly, cut the wrong direction to make a giant piece of bacon. Along with it, we'll try and make the rest of our giant breakfast meal just to complete the whole look. Bacon is cut from pork belly. This right here is pork belly, about as big as I can get my hands on. And normally, when you're making bacon, you'll cure this, smoke it, those things are very common, and you cut it up into strips like this. And of course, right here, we're talking about American style bacon or streaky bacon, as it may be referred to in some other places. But uh, that's what you do, you slice it up in these little pieces. But instead of slicing like this, we're going to see if it's possible to slice it this direction, along parallel with the whole pork belly, because our goal is to get pieces of bacon the size of this entire pork belly. I'm not a butcher and I'm not particularly experienced cutting stuff like this, but I wanna try it. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can make bacon that's like two feet long and over a foot wide, and then we're gonna try cooking it. I think we're gonna put that on our griddle. And I thought if we're doing giant pieces of bacon, we should do some other giant food to go with the breakfast meat. Not too long ago, we had an experiment that used eggshells and we cracked open 60 eggs and we saved those eggs and we're now going to use the eggs, at least some of them, to make a giant omelet that goes with our giant bacon. And then just to continue the trend, I think we will make some large slices of bread and use a lot of cheese. We'll just make an enormous sandwich, but a sandwich that only needs one piece of giant bacon. Um, so we're gonna get that started. I'm gonna start by getting some bread cooking. I have here some crescent dough sheets. I'm gonna unroll that. I think I'm gonna try and do two of them and sort of squish them together so it grows as one piece. While that's cooking, I'm going to try and start slicing my bacon. They don't take too long to cook though, so after they are cooked, take those out. And then we're going to use eggs and we're actually gonna cook the eggs in the oven as well because that seems like the easiest way to fit them on our giant pan. We don't have a pan that could really hold all that many eggs, especially not a stovetop one. So to try and make something really big and expansive and cook kind of evenly, we're gonna use the oven rather than stovetop. All of this, it looks like there's just like an extra thick piece right here that's not quite level with the rest of it. So I'm gonna start by trying to trim that off. Spent a good while sharpening this knife this morning and I'm glad I did. This is actually cutting pretty well. Not a perfectly even cut. I think I went a little too shallow. Hopefully I'll be able to come back from that. I am going to go for fairly thick cut bacon here. It's kind of obvious why if I go for thin, I'm definitely just gonna stab up through it and have tall spots. That's gonna be way too much trouble to try and deal with at all. So I want thick bacon, won't be too thin anywhere. I think I'm gonna start in this corner and kind of butterfly it open this direction. So I'll probably kind of just go down, 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 across, and then just pulling it open. Let's see how this goes. This is an experiment, guys. I've never done this. I don't know if anyone's ever done this. This might be a first for the world of butchering. Maybe not, maybe there's people out there who are like, I've done this 400 times. I'm the ninth pork belly slicer in my family line and you're terrible at it. In which case I apologize. Another issue is that even if I were good enough at this to cut perfectly straight flat across, the meat doesn't come perfectly straight flat across. And as far as I know, there's not really a way to run meat through anything like a wood planer to even it all off. It's organic by definition and not quite level or flat anywhere. We've got a hot griddle. We have here our slice of pork belly, which will hopefully soon become our slice of giant bacon. Now this is not perfectly even. You can see it's like really thick in some places and I can try and trim that down, but I don't know how well it's gonna work. Give it a shot for a few minutes and see if I can just make it all a little bit more even. Anywhere that feels too high, too thick. Now, as it stands at the moment, this piece of pork belly is about 26 and a half, maybe 27 inches long at its longest point. And for width, we're looking at oh, about 10 inches. Now this is gonna change a little bit when we put it in the pan. The pan, it's only 20 inches long, and so we're gonna end up kind of having to 
squish things back together to get it to fit. It should shrink. I'm assuming it will because bacon always shrinks when you cook it. So I'm thinking that it will shrink down and all of those sort of wrinkles we have to put in will come out. Uh, down. I think we're going to have to do kind of a low and slow to some degree to get it to cook all the way through because we don't want it raw in the middle and it's not all going to be crispy. This is certainly going to have some chew to it in the middle, but we want at least cooked all the way through. So I'm just going to be tending this on and off. The second piece of bread is going to be done fairly soon. I might try and cut another slice out of this, but I'm not sure how well it's going to work. There are some parts where I went pretty low. Well, it started low and then I went even lower to try and keep it even. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work. And then when our bread finishes, I'm going to take a pause with whatever else I'm doing and get some egg going. We're going to bake our eggs. We've got 25, 26 eggs on here. Uh, now we're going to try and just add some more egg white around the edges here. Our white has some popped egg yolks in it, so we're going to definitely have some of that as well. The oven is a convection oven, so we should be able to put something underneath the eggs and have that cooked too. So I'm going to try taking this second piece of bacon, fit it on this baking sheet, and again, that is going to involve some crunching up, and throw it in there and see how it goes. And this is just some parchment paper I've got on here so it doesn't stick too much when it starts to get cooking well and crispy. have had bacon stick to the bottom of the pan in the oven before. All right, at this point we basically just have to let everything cook. We've got eggs, bacon, other bacon. Our bread is good. Cooking montage. While our eggs are still warm, I'm gonna throw some diced green onions, some cheese, some red peppers onto it. Let that all the bacon that we're cooking in the oven is the last piece. We've got our bread, we've got our first piece of bacon. I'm gonna do some taste tests on that right now. We've got our eggs. Got some cheese melting over those eggs. We've got some green onions and red pepper sprinkled on top of that. So we're just about ready. And if we really like this, we can put this one on our sandwich. But I wanna see how the other one turns out. Which one just looks more like bacon? And then we'll throw that on. Got some nice crispy bits on the outside here. That's pretty good. I wouldn't necessarily say it tastes like bacon. It wasn't cured, it wasn't smoked. Bacon is often one of those two things. Maybe it's a requirement of being bacon, but it's good. It's got good pork flavor. That little piece that I just cut off had some meat, like some regular tissue, and then it had a little bit of fat on top, which had been browned. And that all worked together is quite a delicious bite. I'm just curious about this little bit right here, which looks like it's probably more fat and looks kind of more familiar in terms of being bacon-like. So I'm gonna see if it tastes like what it looks like. That's a lot closer. Again, not smoked, not cured, but that's a lot more similar to the bacon taste. We are down to, well, I cut a little piece off the end there, but I think we are at about 16 inches. So we lost 11 inches in length and it was between nine and 10 inches wide. And now we're looking at eight and a half at the widest point. Well, that is cooked all the way through. So that is cooked through to the center. The outside, of course, doesn't look very much like bacon. We're gonna try something. Hopefully we won't burn down the studio in the process of trying this. Well, I gotta say, I think that one looks a little bit more like salmon than it does like bacon. That's some interesting coloring we got in there. So I'm just gonna cut a slice off of this and see what we're working with here. Hmm. I'd call that fairly overcooked, kind of chewy. Not much good bacon flavor. All right, now I don't for a second think that this is gonna survive a transfer really nicely. So I'm gonna use my spatula and get whatever I can in one pass. See how much wants to travel. Oh, so close. Perfectly transferred. 
right, our giant slab of bacon pork chop. Top off our sandwich. That is the largest breakfast sandwich I've ever seen. Whether it's the best breakfast sandwich, that's debatable, but I wanna take a slice out of that and just see how it is as a sandwich together. So I'm actually just gonna cut like right down the middle and I'm probably just gonna take a triangle little chunk out of it. Not because that's the best way, but because it's the easiest way to get all the ingredients. Crispy bits actually do come through with a good bacon flavor. It's not strong, like I said, the lack of cure or smoke makes it so it's a little different, but overall, quite enjoyable. Well guys, that's it for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. If you hit that box up at the top, it'll take you directly to our last video. You should go check that out, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.